Hi and welcome to my latest video on the Yamaha Modi X and using it in conjunction with your door. And today we're going to be looking at a multi-track performance in MIDI within your door. The first thing I want to say is that you do get a copy of Cubase AI free with your Yamaha Montage. So I suggest you download that and you can follow along precisely. What I'm about to show you will work within any doors, but there will be slight differences depending on the door that you're using. I'm actually using Cubase Pro, but everything I show you should be exactly the same on Cubase AI. That's the version that you can get for free. So let's get started. The first thing to consider is exactly what you want to record. If you want to record just your performances from the keyboard, um, you don't need to worry about MIDI clock at all. If you want to record some of the arpeggios, then you may have to worry about MIDI clock. I'll attempt to explain. If you want to record a drum pattern and it's four on the floor, straightforward, no problem at all, then you could record it, just set the um, the tempo on the Montana, on the, on the Modi X and the tempo on Cubase to be exactly the same. And because it's basically dealing with a trigger on, as long as that note is triggered on at the right time, your tempo will be in sync for that particular arpeggio. When it comes to drum arpeggios, it's slightly different. You could do the same method. However, if they have any sort of a swing feel, you probably don't want to quantize that to the nearest beat. So I'd recommend you enable MIDI clock and I'll show you how to do that in Cubase. The first thing you need to do is to go up to the transport menu, select project synchronization setup. And basically you want in your MIDI clock destinations, you want to send to mid to the mode X. So it's uh, mode X one, two and three, make sure they're all ticked. I think I forget which one it is, but one of either two or three uh, receives the clock information. And in my setting, I'm not sure if you need it, but I've got MTC input set to Modi X1. I don't, I don't know if that's relevant, but just basically make sure that the Modi X is receiving its MIDI clock from Cubase or from your door. What will happen then is if I type in a value here of 100 and hit return, you'll see that the Modi X after a second's hesitation has gone to 100 as well that's quite important. It will let the, for example, if there is a, a drum pattern with an arpeggio within it that has a swing time, it won't destroy that swing time feel if, if the two clocks are locked together. If you're not worried about that sort of thing, don't worry too much about the clock. You'll, know, you'll soon find out if you need it because you'll find that uh, when you quantize things, the timing's slightly out. So now we're ready to create a multi-part performance inside the Modi X. Let's select the uh, name of the performance, go to category search and select init. And what this is, is an initialized patch. And we're going to select multi and hit enter. This creates eight different parts assigned to this performance. Now they're all at the moment set to concert grand piano. If that really bugs you and you just want to create a blank one, you can save your own initialized patch away. Simply select the one that you want to delete and hit delete. That gets rid of each of those parts and you could create a blank one, but personally it doesn't worry me. First thing I'm going to do is select a drum kit. So I'm going to go category search, I'm going to select uh, drums and percussion, and you'll see there's a variety of drum kits and they're all sort of set up on your keyboard. So you can record your own pattern. So having selected a drum kit, we can audition audition all the sounds across the keyboard and record them in, in the conventional way that a lot of you will be used to. So let's just do that now. Now you'll notice that I had the automatic quantize set to record. Uh, that's basically, we'll keep all the timings tight for drums. But uh, we have a mode we have a Modi X and it can, re, it can send arpeggios. So let's try and record a rhythm arpeggio into the door. First of all, each kit that is um, stored inside the Modi X comes with an arpeggio pattern associated with it. So if I select ARP on or off and uh, leave it on real drums kit and play a note, that's an arpeggio that's been assigned to 
that drum kit. Let's call it the next one. Slightly different pattern. Now, at the moment, everything's playing at 80, 80 BPM because I've got the uh, I've got them locked together. So, seeing as I'm set on 80, I'm going to choose a a, um, a lower tempo uh, type kit. There's one down tempo. Let's try that. That's a bit uh, unusual. That one. Let's try gated beats. That'll do nicely. Let's try that one. So um, let's just hit record. We've got the uh, Modi X and Cubase are locked together. So uh, let's hit record and away we go. Let's try that back. I'll switch off Arpeggio. I'll switch off the metronome. That's going to get annoying. So there we are. You'll see that uh, if we open that up, every note is recorded on the beat because we've got the two clocks locked together. You could, of course, quantize that if you haven't locked the clocks together. But don't forget, if you're doing some sort of swing feel, you might destroy that unless you have the swing settings on in your in your um, quantize settings inside Cubase. So now we've got our drums, let's go and set up the next part. Let's record a bass. So we'll get uh, back into our performance mode and we'll select category search. Let's uh, select bass. And then here's one I found earlier, lately bass. Now those of you that are old enough to remember might remember the Yamaha TX81Z, one of the sounds it was famous for. In fact, probably one of the only sounds it was famous for was the Lately Bass preset. And here it is making a reappearance in the Mode EX. So let's select that. Um, and the next little tip that I'd like to give you was actually passed on to me by Roland Gerard, and that uh, to avoid double triggering of the notes, you can actually just switch off the keyboard and uh, that will disable the double triggering. So let's create a new track and you'll see that it's still set to Modi X and it's automatically created it on MIDI channel number two and we should hear that uh, correctly now. So that's a worthwhile little tip. Switch off the keyboard control when it's not required. So let's record a very simple bass part. leave that looping and if you're fast create another track automatically go to MIDI channel number three and we're ready for the next part but I'm going to audition a part and show you how to do it step by step you can imagine if you've got everything preset ready to go just keep recording in Cubase it's when the when the uh, mood takes you so part three I'm going to select a pad sound so I've got a category search pad Let's have an analog pad and uh, let's go for, take something we like the look of. Uh, let's try power of emotion and uh, hit enter and audition that sound. Now again, you'll see the keyboard symbols popped on. Let's knock that off to show you the difference with, with it. You're getting like a chorus effect because the notes are being sent twice without, that's correct. So um, this is probably a good time to point out, you can actually adjust the volume levels of all the parts using the uh, four sliders on the front of the Mode EX. So let's actually uh, record, well, let's first of all adjust the level of this pad by moving the knob up and down. You'll see that the part volume uh, is listed here, uh, maximum being 127, minimum being zero. Let's just keep it low in the background like so and um, we can also adjust the sound using the mod wheel on this particular patch so we can make it brighter or brighter or duller so let's record something now so I'll return to zero 
and hit record. So for the pad, you'll notice that as I was opening the wheel, that information has been recorded in PsiQ basis. If I uh, double click on this and switch it from velocity to modulation, there's the modulation I, information I recorded. So I started up, opened the sound to make it brighter and brought it back down again. So that information has all been recorded with the, uh, with the chords. So, if we're going to be really organised, let's label these. Let's label that bass. And we'll label this pad. And we're ready for part number four. So let's double click on Cubase and you'll see it's automatically selected MIDI channel number four and it's automatically selected the Modiax. So let's choose a lead sound. So I'm selecting number four, category search. I'll select um, synth lead. We'll go for analog again. And let's audition the milk and honey. It's old, old school analog sound. Let's go with that one then. So um, we'll enter, press enter again. And I'm gonna switch off the keyboard symbol. Okay, and first of all, we can just set that playing so we can improvise over the top. That'll do, hit record. Now, if you spotted my deliberate mistake, it was that I left automatic quantize on, so it destroyed the timing a little bit. But uh, we'll ignore that for the purposes of the uh, demonstration. That's basically how to get multi-track recordings inside your door from the Modi X. You can keep on going and it'll support all, all eight parts there. I think, it, I think it does actually support 16, but um, I doubt I'll ever be using it as many as that. So, time for a few tips and tricks. I've muted uh, the bass, the pad, and the lead. Let's name that lead. And uh, let's look at how we can actually audition different drum sounds. So I'm gonna go into, so select the drums, go to edit. And you'll see along the bottom, there are various elements that are displayed. Now, depending on the drum kit you select, some of them will say, kick, snare, hi-hats, etc. In this case, it's obviously using slightly unconventional samples, so they're just labeled elements. But let's, uh, let's play that back. And you can see, as they play, the elements are selected. So let's select that particular element. And solo it. And it's the hi-hat. Now, if we want to change that particular sound, Let's just uh, go up to select the number of the uh, sample that's being used. You'll see it says hi-hat closed T, is that TB1 or T81? There's an open hi-hat, there's another closed one. So we might prefer that. Likewise, we can go in and change the snare, we can go in and change any, any of the individual sounds. It's not an area that I've explored in depth yet. When I do, I'll post a more detailed video about it because there are other ways as well to get this working uh, in Cubasis that I think you'll appreciate. So before we go, let's uh, re-record that lead. I'm gonna delete it now, switch off automatic quantize and uh, hit record.
Right, I could have made those initial notes a little bit longer, so let's, uh, there's a technical name for this, it's cheating. Let's just lengthen those notes a little bit. Okay, it sounds a bit better. Once you finish, you'll obviously save away on the door, but don't forget to save away inside your Modi X. So go to Store on the front panel, select Store as a new performance, and give it a name. So we're going to call it uh, just New Performance. And hit Done. And sure enough, there it is saved away as a new performance. So basically we've covered everything you need to get you started really on multi-tracking uh, inside MIDI in your door using the Modi X. So thanks very much indeed for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. I'll try and keep you up to date with uh, videos on the Modi X. I'll be covering other topics in particular looking at uh, the drums in a little bit more detail because I didn't uh, want to go into too much detail. I wanted to keep this one brief for you. So thanks very much for watching and see you on the next video.